Okay, I'm gonna keep it super real and authentic. Door is taken care of, human to take care of, and we're back to the story. So, I, I came home for a weekend after finishing college, and this was after spending, you know, I lived in like a little tiny cabin in the forest on like five acres of land for a few months, and there I got to really delve into myself. I honestly was working with a lot of um, medicine, I call it medicine because it really was medicine for me and, and it seemed like God, the universe spirit just kept on handing it to me. So I did work with a lot of psilocybin mushrooms and and it was always in a very ceremonial way. Um, it always seemed like I wasn't choosing it, I wasn't looking for it, but it was being, you know, really like given to me or handed to me. I'm sure, you know, a lot of people here have also experienced this. So. You know, these ceremonies that I was doing with groups of friends, they like felt like soul family and we were just, we weren't just doing it to have fun or, you know, F around. We were doing it to explore the parts of ourselves that were so afraid to shine and we were doing it to, to sing and dance and laugh and hula hoop and run around in the forest and dunk ourselves in the river and like, remember what it felt like to be alive. Like, remember what it feels like to be alive. Because after college and school for so long, you feel like so in this system, in this block and in this cage, at least I did. And so that was a time that I felt really free. Now, um, a lot of that came with, um, as many blessings as it was, it was also a curse at the same time. Because a lot of visions and dreams that you can have when you're working with these medicines... I'll speak for myself. They showed me many things that weren't true. Um, or many things that maybe were true at their core, at their spark, where the source of the, the vision or the dream came from, but like, like the masks and what I was seeing was not true, whether that be with relationships with myself, with the world around me. And it's not like I was tripping out and like seeing things. I, it was, it was dreams that I had about my future, it was dreams that I had about who I was and visions that, like actual vision quests of close eye being in deep meditation for hours and hours and hours um you know and a lot of what i experienced was deep healing at the same time it took me years really took me years to unprogram those visions and dreams as well because like i said while the source of them may be real or truth what i was seeing because if you're not a fully cleared human being and you still have a lot of schmutz on you then you're gonna see with dirty lenses. At least I saw with dirty lenses. So, sure, maybe a lot of what I saw was true, and the healing I was experiencing was true for me in that moment. And then it also took years to let go of these stories that the medicine was showing me. And it's not the medicine's fault. It's not my fault. It's not God's fault. It just is something that I go. Th I had to go through for my journey. And and so, I just give a little bit of caution working with any medicine because. You know, if you need it to really experience, like, the oneness of God, then, and if it's calling you, go for it. But if you feel like you need it to be with God, then you've lost, we've lost the whole reason for working with the medicine. And so a lot of times medicine can, t can turn into poison if used the wrong way or used for too long of a period of time, which is something I experienced after years of working with it. So, okay, fast forward a little bit. I went back home, like I said, to my family after moving out of this cabin and and I was ready to like go explore the world and I lived at home for like, I just went for a weekend just to visit my family and and then I was just like, what am I running away from? All the deepest shadow work, I mean Ram Dass says the most beautiful thing, he says, if you think that you are spiritually enlightened, go home and live with your family. And so I did that. Instead of going to explore the world and find out who I was, I moved back in with my mom. And I was in my hometown after being in Orlando for college. I was back in South Florida and I, for eight months, looked at every single shadow of my being from my life until that point. And it was hard. Um, I also went to Kashi, which is a sustainable permaculture um, how do you call it, like, uh, it's based on Hinduism, but every religion is welcome there, um, 
Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, everything is welcome. It's like an open permaculture <sighs> living space. I think 80 people lived on the on the property at that time. It's in um, Sebastian, Florida. And that's where I worked with Terry Meir and beautiful people who knew how to live sustainably with the land from compost to gardening to, um, to food forests just living in line with the land and so there I delved into Hinduism, Buddhism, I, I, I touched on, I really, I mean I've done yoga for so long and breath works for so long but meditation was really really hard for me and so it was a time that I really did that, I sat in front of statues and just asked God to not give, not that these statues had power but that these statues were a reflection of the divine and I wanted that part of me to come to light and to full expression and so I really dived into every spiritual um, and religious practice I could find because I was really looking for truth I was really 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 looking for truth and when I when I was living with my mom for those eight months I really wanted to face every part of me that I didn't want to see so that I can like break through myself once and for all and then I went on birthright. Birthright is an experience for people of Jewish heritage to go to Israel for free and I wanted to explore the world so it was like a $3,000 trip for free and I was like heck yeah I'm gonna go and I went with my best friend Nicole and all the truth I was looking for. All the truth I was looking for. All the truth I was looking for. I found within my three weeks there. I had never experienced being so sober in my life and feeling like I was tripping balls. <laughs> like I was tripping so hard on God and life and truth. And I was the soberest I had been in five plus years. And so in those three weeks, I backpacked around Israel. I went to Jerusalem at Asha Torah, I went to Tzfat, where I went to Ascent, the hostel there, where they teach Torah and Kabbalah classes, and the ancient roots of Judaism, of Yiddishkeit, of what it means to be from the tribe of Yehuda. And so, it's like everything I'd ever searched for, because like when you're searching for truth, and you find fallen sparks of truth, it... It's like that you can hold on to the truth for so long and eventually it'll crumble and then you crumble along with it. And so when I found, when Israel brought me home, when God brought me to Israel, when I saw holiness for the first time, there's a big difference between holiness and spirituality. Holiness, or let's start with spirituality, is I'm in the center and it's what makes me feel connected to God. It what, it's what makes me feel high and good and like I am doing the right thing and like spirituality is, it revolves around me. Whether that be music or drugs or anything, even healing. And then you find holiness, which in Hebrew is Kedusha. And holiness is like this untapped, like you can't break it. It's not some, it's not a fallen truth. It is the truth that everything comes from. Holiness is like God is in the middle, something out something beyond me is in the middle. It's like the we instead of the I. And so I felt this holiness for the first time and I literally felt God taking me in his hand, like, you know, guiding me through my whole experience. I had nothing planned and I was experiencing the truth that I'd always looked for. And so I came back home. I, you know, my ego wanted to test if that was real, so I really tested it for like four months. I went back to my old ways of working with medicine and working in community and, and all of this like spiritual stuff in other religions and a lot of idol worship. So a lot of spirituality has a lot of idol worship where, you know, it might look like we're doing something good, like we're sitting in front of an idol or we want that part of the divine to be reflecting us, but the one thing that God hates most, I've learned, is when we give any sort of power to anything besides Him. And so, I was like discovering that. Because um, you're either living in tune with the oneness or you're living in tune with separateness, which is 
statues and this medicine has control over me and this crystal has power to make me feel good and it's so fallen, it's so sad and I, I lived with that for many years and so came back home, tested everything, I ended up the most depressed and anxious I'd been since college and I was like what the heck is going on and then there was a program that Rabbi Menes Friedman leads, it was in Key West it's called Snorkel and Study, and I, I went back to studying Kabbalah, Hasidut, and Torah, um, which I would love to delve into more in other videos, but for now we're going to stick to the story. And so I went there, and after day two, I was like, breathe, like my soul could breathe again, and I was like, I remember what the truth is, I remember what I ran away from, and so I went back home, and in Hollywood, Florida. And I applied for a school um, to learn the Torah, Hasidus, the ways of, um, of ancient Judaism in modern times. And it was like the week after I came home I applied, I got in, I left four months later, went to Israel, and I have been there ever since. And I made Aliyah, which means that I am a citizen now in Israel, so I have dual citizenship in America and in Israel. And Wow, there are so many things I can say about Eretz Israel. It's um, Eretz Kodesh, the Holy Land, and unfortunately, it's been misunderstood. Um, I misunderstood it. I misunderstood what Judaism was. I misunderstood everything. But I, I had looked everywhere for truth. I had looked in like every corner I can find, and the one place that I ever felt home in myself and on land was in my own roots. I believe that as human beings, when we connect to our roots, the roots of our ancestors, when we, when we remember why we were born in this body and with this skin color and with this sex and all the other things that make us who we are or what we are, because really who we are is like so beyond all of those labels, then we really connect to why we're here. 